This video walks through installation of auxiliary lighting on a 2018 or newer Jeep Wrangler JL and wiring it to the factory auxiliary switch panel on the inside of the Jeep using the interior connections under the dash. You can follow this process to wire accessories other than lighting using the exterior connections under the hood or using the already installed aftermarket Mopar auxiliary switch panel as the basic steps are the same. I will show you one idea on how to mount lights to a roof rack and you'll even see how I drill into the hard top. This video features a custom built 2018 Jeep Wrangler JL Unlimited Rubicon with lift, 37 inch tires, winch, and more. If you're interested in seeing more of this Jeep and keeping up with its progress, feel free to subscribe to the American Jeeper channel and watch the first stage build video. This Jeep Wrangler is built to wheel off-road first and foremost, and many of those trips involve going long distances and camping, sometimes off the grid. Formerly, I used a camping trailer I built with a rooftop tent pulled by my old Jeep JK, but this Jeep JL will eventually carry the tent on the roof rack and be a fully contained solution. Lighting while night wheeling and having a well-lit campsite are both important, so I came up with a flexible solution that I can light both sides and the rear of the Jeep. Some places I take the Jeep off-road have narrow, tree-lined trails, and especially with this larger Jeep JL, things can get hung up easily. The last thing I want is to rip new lights off my Jeep, so I decided I needed to mount them as recessed as possible between the rack and the roof of the Jeep. The Maximus 3 Rhino Pioneer rack solution is very low profile, which is great, but that doesn't allow much room, so I needed a compact, low profile light with a nice output. After doing some research, I decided the best lights for my needs are the S2 Sport by Baja Designs. They are less than 2 inches tall, weigh only 8 ounces each, and have a rugged design. These 20 watt lights put out over 1100 lumens and only draw 0.9 amps, which makes them great to run on the Jeep battery while camping. I also like that bulbs of different light pattern types can be interchanged. The pair of lights comes as a fairly complete kit, but I picked up a few other items to customize my solution. Instead of mounting side and rear lights, I made the decision to mount these lights on the rear corners of the Jeep to get the most light spread and to use some extra parts to keep the lights recessed nicely and allow them to be able to rotate when needed. This is one of the two lower corner plates to the rear corners of the Rhino rack. One of the two mounting locations for this plate is an almost perfect place to mount the light brackets. I used a quarter inch longer screw with non-permanent blue thread lock and nylon washers to allow the brackets and attached lights to easily rotate towards the side or rear of the Jeep when needed. It is challenging to get the screws in as the space is tight. A clamp, Phillips head bit, and pliers come in handy here. Once the brackets are installed, the lights screw into them with an Allen wrench and have some up and down adjustment as well as side to side. Now that the lights are mounted, I want to make sure I plan out my wiring layout. I have to get wires from the outside of the rear top to the inside of the Jeep under the dash. Let's back up and look at the wiring that comes with the kit. One bundle quick connects with the individual lights and goes into one connection. The other bundle joins first with another quick connect, has a built-in switch that I don't need, a fuse, and a positive connection and ground wire. Another consideration here is the top removal, and one reason why I like the connections here. I take the tops on and off of my Jeeps and run them in different configurations, so it is important to be able to disconnect the lights quickly. You'll see how I am able to accomplish this by how I plan to run the wiring, but for now, the fun part, drilling into the top. I need a hole large enough to get the current wiring connections through, and also may need access to run more wiring later, so the hole saw it is. Not everyone is comfortable drilling into their top, but my roof rack required me to drill 8 holes for brackets, so the ninth one isn't really a big deal to me. The best place to drill to prevent pooling water leaking through the top is in the center of one of the raised ridges. The very center appears to be structural and thicker, so stay away from that. Be sure of your spot and go for it.
I picked up a few sizes of rubber grommets, wire protectors, and silicone sealant to plug the top and give me access later if I want to run more lighting. The plug fits, so it is time to run the first bundle through the hole. I clip the rubber pieces to allow for sliding the wires through them. As mentioned, the lights connect and disconnect easily and the connections have a watertight seal. Cheaper light setups won't offer these options and you want to make sure they work. I have a little extra wiring due to the offset of the loom, so loosely zip tying it will keep it tidy for now. Here's what the exterior looks like before sealing. I'll seal everything up with silicone and let it dry overnight. When morning comes, the lights still look good and it's time to check the seal around the hardtop opening. Everything appears to be drying well, so now I can run more wiring. The best place to keep the wiring as hidden and protected as possible is to run it over to the interior roof rack bracket and down the roll bar. I already have a switch on the dash, so the one supplied with the kit needs to go. The trim on the inside of the hardtop removes easily with the T20 bit and the wire is easy enough to tuck between the gaps here and under the carpet along the passenger side. I ran the CB wiring from the tailgate nearly the same way. Since I removed the switch, I need to splice these wires to the piece that contains the fuse, which is easy enough to do with the proper tools. The carpet and trim pulls back easily, and there is a place to run wiring. Just be careful that you don't pinch or bind anything along the way. Arriving at the front passenger floorboard, I am getting close to the hot connection. Disconnecting the battery is important to make sure nothing is damaged and the system stays safe during the installation process. There are two panels on the passenger side under the dash. The smaller panel comes off easily and is the same one removed to take the doors off the Jeep. The door wiring connector should slide off its mounting point and a 10mm nut should be removed to free the larger lower panel. Once the body is exposed you will see grounding points for your black wire, including the lowest of the three bolts shown here. With the black ground wire installed, there is only the red positive wire to connect to the proper color wire under the dash. Opening up the bundle a bit to expose the wiring is important. With a Rubicon that has the factory aux switches, there will be six wires in total. The two thicker wires are 40 amp and go to auxiliary one and two. The orange and blue pink wires are 15 amp and go to auxiliary three and four, respectively. The white red goes to the battery and the pink orange goes to the ignition. The Mopar switch bank has the first four wires only. The Baja Designs lights are low draw, so I wired to auxiliary switch number four. After that, it's easy enough to reinstall the lower panel and carefully tuck the wiring out of the way. I reconnect the battery, and the moment of truth is here. Auxiliary four lights up on the dash, and so do the newly mounted Baja Designs LED lights. I carefully zip tie extra wiring under the dash out of the way and wrap the exposed wiring to protect it from damage. I also zip tie the wiring to the rear of the roof rack brackets and replace the roll bar trim.
I wrap the external wiring and zip tie the rest along the roof rack out of the way to minimize potential hangups or damage. Once night hits, I test the lights and get a nice beam pattern to the rear and sides of the Jeep. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing to the American Jeeper channel. See you on the trails!